So in the last couple of months, since basically January when Tailwind 4 launched, I kept seeing questions of how do you configure Tailwind 4 efficiently in an NPM workspace. So I figured, let's just sit down and give it a look. But before we do that, I need one favor from your side. Go and like the video, obviously if you like it, and make sure you subscribe. All right, ready? Let's dive in. So looking first at the actual blog post that is now out for quite a while, a couple of months basically, one of the main things, apart from all the, the core features that I introduced, is the simplified installation. And so if I scroll down here, at some point they mention that right now you just need basically the Tailwind CSS package, the Tailwind post CSS package, then you just configure post CSS like this one here, and then you import Tailwind CSS in your CSS file, that's it. No more Tailwind config, no more weird configurations that you need to take care of, maintain, etc. But it's zero configuration, you can start immediately. Now, interestingly, also, if you're already using Vids, you can use their Tailwind CSS Vid package. And at that point, you don't even need post CSS. You just need to plug in this new Vid plugin and you're good to go, which is amazing. Now, let's have a look. So I have here a super simple demo workspace, which is basically kind of like a shop application if you want. Super simple, just with fake data where you can navigate around. And this is an NPM workspace. And so you can see I've here this workspace is properly defined. And I happen to also use NX here to run my tasks in this workspace. Now, looking into the actual application, this is how I configure it. First of all, I obviously have at the root level all the Tailwind packages. So you can see Tailwind CSS, Tailwind Vite. I could actually remove this by now. So this is not more needed. So what you need is these two packages because I'm already using a Vite based React setup which is basically what my shop application is up here. So at the Vite config, you can see I'm pulling in here this Tailwind CSS Vite file, uh, Vite plugin, I'm registering it. So with that, Vite should be good to go. I don't have any other configs here at all, so you don't see any Tailwind configs, but rather in my source file, because I happen to have the style CSS in my source file, I just import Tailwind at the top. Now. You might notice this one here, which is a little bit weird. So let me just remove this for now, and then I'll come back to this later. So let me serve our application, which is our shop application here. So it boots up. Let me refresh it, and you will see it kind of works because Tailwind works up here, so you can styling looks good, but it doesn't really work down here. And that's the main thing people have been asking about online. Because the problem is that I don't have all my components in my shop application. So this is kind of like an NPM monorepo workspace setup. Basically, I'm modularizing my shop application into packages down here. So let me just, to give you an idea, show the project graph here with an X. And you can see here, I have my shop app, which then depends on a bunch of features further down here. Some are even just not references yet in my demo shop app, but you can see how everything is modularized, meaning, if I go here to the app router, I have here, for instance, a route that goes to a product detail page, a route that goes to the home page, but the home page itself pulls in the product grid from this product list package, for instance. And so if we go down here into the packages, products, you can see how I structure this workspace. I have a product list package that deals with all the issues that is about displaying these cards and the product grid itself. And in fact, you see here I've, I have a product grid where I'm obviously using Tailwind classes to style my grid. But it looks like things like the gap six here are not being kind of recognized because probably Tailwind is pruning them out because they are not used in the main shop application, which Tailwind here is scanning via that Vite plugin. Now on their docs, what they have is what you can do is to give it, like use this source directive here to point to the entry points of these sub packages, if you want, in our NPM workspace. And so that's exactly what I'm doing here. So I'm saying here, for instance, for the product list and product detail, these are the packages that I'm using. And so go into these packages, which basically would mean go to the entry point here, right? So the very top level, I could actually go even to slash source something, because then Tailwind will scan that specific folder, applying the same rules, like not pulling in like git ignored files, etc. And so with that in, if I just reserve my Vite app, you will see that the styles are being applied here 
properly again and automatically. So with that, you basically can fix your Tailwind setup. Now, the next question is, do I really want to maintain all of this by hand? Because clearly this is a super simple setup, super simple workspace, but you could have tons and tons of these packages in a proper company, enterprise, whatever you want to call this workspace, right? And not even just registering by hand, because that could be something that you could do. But the problem is, if people move things around or reference things, these products here differently, then you need to remember to go back and update it. And these types of errors are really hard to catch because as you have seen before, if I remove here the product list and I reserve, it's not that my build breaks, right? It's just that the product list would, is just weirdly styled. You can see some of the cars still work, but then the gaps here are not being shown. And the gaps could even be on here if for some reason my shop app would use that class. So it wouldn't be a get pruned, it would work, but then someone removes an arbitrary component and everything breaks. So really hard to detect errors. So what I want to arrive at is we want to have this generated automatically. Now, I have already recorded a couple of days ago, whenever this goes out, a video on the NX channel about how you can generate these Tailwind Glob patterns for Tailwind version 3. And we can do the same for version 4 as well. It's just that we generate them in a different place. So rather than in the Tailwind config, we generate them here in our style CSS file. So how does it work? In the next, there exists a concept, and you can obviously go back and watch that video, I'll link it in the description. But in the next, there is a concept of so-called sync generators. So if you go to extending an X, and then you scroll down a bit, there is, or just use the search, there is a create a sync generator documentation page. And that's basically what I did. I added a local plugin, which you can add here and then generate and so if I go in here, I specifically added that into the root folder of my workspace into tools, Tailwind Sync plugin. And so this is a local plugin because you're not going to publish that. You could to NPM, but you're just using that locally in your NX workspace. And then in there, I created such a specific sync generator. Now what sync generators do at a high level is basically look at the state of your workspace and then update your source code based on these changes. So I'm not going too much into the details here, keep the video short. You can look at the linked GitHub repo, which I'll have in the video description. But basically what I'm doing here is I'm leveraging the NX dev kit, which is an API that allows you to extend NX and customize and tailor it to your own behavior and your own needs that you might have in your workspace. And so I'm using some of these lower level functions like create project graph async to grab the project graph from NX, because my idea is I want to go and look at my application, in sh at, which is a shop application at this point, and then retrieve all the dependent projects of shop and then just add those as a glob pattern. Because clearly there might be some other libraries up here like feature current orders that some other application in my NPM workspace or monorepo might, might use, which I'm not interested in it because maybe those are not being used with like Tailwind or they have a different setup. So I just want to focus on my shop application rather than globbing the entire NPM repo, which might not be super efficient at all. And so basically here I'm grabbing this project graph and I'm going through at visiting all its nodes, kind of traversing this tree. And then I'm building up here these glob patterns, as you can see, concatenating those and then inserting them into the style CSS file. So how does that work? Well, basically I need to register them at the product level. So NX sync generators can be registered globally if there's some need from, for some global generator, but you can also register them at the local project level, which I'm going to do. And so I'm going to here into my shop application, into the package JSON, and there you can have such an NX node for NX specific behavior. I already have here one for adding a tag, but just below here, I can paste in the registration of these sync generators. So let's have a look what's happening here. I'm basically saying whenever you run targets built or serve at these sync generators and run them to check whether the current state of what we want to achieve, in this case, generate the glob patterns has happened. And if not, let the user know. We'll see in a minute. But basically I'm here referring to this plugin, which I've, I've created here, which we've just seen. So let me just go out down here. This is basically the name of this plugin here. And then this is the name of the generator to invoke which is listed here in the plugin as this generator. So based on that information, NX knows how to find it. 
It will also pre-compile it on the fly, so you don't have to compile it or pre-build it. That will just happen automatically. And then X will know how to execute this one. So let's see it in action. Let me actually remove all of these packages here. So mimic that we have some change or we didn't set it up yet. And so if I now run surf shop, you will see this sync generator kick in. So it mentions here the workspace is out of sync. This specific one wants to update these source directives and add them to the tailwind, um, to the style CSS. And so you can either do that or you can also skip it for some reason. So if I hit yes, you will see how these glob patterns are being added. And as a result, my application serves here properly. Now, if I change for some reason the dependency tree, so let me go for instance here in app TSX, let me remove here the product detail because for some reason I'm changing that, I'm moving it around, I'm serving an application again or building it, you will see the same way this kicks in. If I go over to stars, you will see this product detail is being removed, but the rest of the libraries are still there. Now notice multiple libraries have been removed at this point because those were all dependents of this product detail. And so you can see it's not just a direct dependency, but we actually walk down the entire tree. And because NX has that knowledge, we can fully automate that whole approach. So again, obviously, if I go back here and undo all of this, I surf here, the app again, or you can also manually trigger these sync generators by just running NX sync. So we trigger all of them that have been registered. You can see here that it got synced automatically. And now we have the product detail back and all the other ones that this feature product detail depended on. All right, so I hope this gave you a good insight of first of all, how you can figure Tailwind efficiently in an Ampium workspace. We just happened to use NX here, which is really nice because we can use these NX sync generators to fully automate the registration of these Tailwind glob patterns. Definitely check out the NX sync generators on our docs or look at the previous video because they're really powerful to automating all sorts of different things. So as always, make sure you like the video, subscribe, because that gives me a lot of feedback to keep going, keep pushing out more of this uh, type of content. And I see you hopefully all in the next one. Take care.